Hey gang, welcome again to the Arizona Real Estate News Show. I think that's what we call it. I am Mr. Negative and uh, we've got uh, <laughs> Jack no, Smith not. with Century 21 Arizona Foothills and Pat, what's my rate McMaster's again today and Ruby is uh, is absent, but I think she'll be back with us next week. So I said that because somebody said that they called me Mr. Negative. So I just, you know, hey, you got to run with it sometimes. I'd see, you know. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> You really do. You know. I want a, I want a nickname. Oh, it'll show up. You, you know, took me took me two and a half years to get this one. So you know, you got to earn it. So you got. Right. <laughs> Let's see. And it we'll was, figure out uh, something. Video I did on water, and uh, so got a couple of cool videos in the in the pipeline. Uh, one of them is uh, uh, with my um, inspector. I used Dylan. Uh, he put together a bunch of unusual things that he finds. He's got some videos and pictures. And it's really entertaining. And then I've got another one coming out um, showing the building process for these 3D homes that are built with robotics down in oh, Cotton wow. County. And I actually play their video where they show exactly how they put these homes together. To me, to me it's fascinating. And uh, so, I mean, you know, you're not going to build any big Scottsdale custom homes with those things but uh it's a whole different way to go to go to market but uh today i want to kind of show you know there wasn't a wasn't a whole lot that changed but uh i want to show um the anomaly with listings right now so you can see that little tiny line right here um didn't we all think that was going to go up no mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you no. didn't think you didn't think active listings would go up Nope. And just me. So I'm, I, you know, cause, cause it always does in January and it, it, it didn't. So there's and, no norm anymore. No, there isn't any norm except the one that goes into the bar at cheers, but uh, yeah. norm. <laughs> but what we're seeing now I'm seeing here's listings under contract. See how they're spiking up. You know, we had our holiday doldrums down here, but we're sitting here at, 6329 and and uh, I'm seeing on my seven day moving average here that our sales numbers are back where they were in July. And wow. so even though I'm starting to see new listings over every seven days starting to creep up, they're being chased by contracts. <laughs> and there's only a difference of about 250 now where before back here it's about 1500 and that's why prices came flying down. Now, whether or not it's sustainable, there's a lot of things that can happen by then. And then I'm showing the demand index where it kind of met in the middle here and they're just kind of, they're, they're right at the same. I mean, you got the, you know, demand index is 72.3 and the supply index 72.8 and they're just not budging. And it just, um, they're just staying put. So it's, uh, it seems like it typifies, that just kind of summarizes the whole market. It does. It's like, you know, they, they kind of kind of crossed and you're arguing, okay, is there going to be a breakout? You know, are listings going to start going and sales start to come down? And it looked like they were, you know, the little blue line of listings started coming up and the red line with the demand started going down. And then they just went back up and kissed again. And that's where we're staying. We're right. We're right there. And, uh, and it's um, because of little improvement, <coughs> excuse me, in rates. Is that what you're seeing, Pat? Yeah, I mean, I don't know if it's so much an improvement. I mean, we've been, I personally think that this range that we're in, I'm looking at right here. I mean, it was up today. I mean, we saw the. 10 year with five and a half coupon was up in you know, 19 basis points. It, you know, treasury was down two, but I think it really has to do with the fact that rates have kind of, you know, stuck in this channel here. I mean, activity seems to be picking up. I mean, we're kind of the MBS, the mortgage backed security market has been trading in this, like kind of this defined area now between the support here down around in these lines right here and this, this uh, ceiling. So, um, I think I've alluded to a couple of times, I think once rates kind of 
you know, get some calmness about them, people feel better that, okay, they can list a house and get, they can kind of project the next 30 days what kind of rate they might be able to get if they sell a house and buy another house. Versus, I mean, before when you had such gyrations, you know, when rates were going from six to seven, seven and a half, people are like, oh, I'm just going to sit tight. I can't move. You know, I can't do anything. But now with rates kind of calming down a little bit, it's been an uneventful week this week. I mean, we got the personal consumption, the PCE numbers coming out on Friday. But I just think that this calmness has allowed people to say, okay, let's let's do something now. Does that make sense? Yeah, I read something that said that if you're looking for a sleep aid, watch the bond market. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably a good way. I mean, I think, but I think that gives people a reason. When it's volatile, people people just back off when it's volatile. I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, when the seller's like, you know, I can't sell my house because I don't know what rate I'm going to get if I buy this other house. And now it's kind of calmed down. And um, I think people are accepting of the fact of, you know, if you get a rate, high fives, low sixes, you know, obviously there's some builders that are giving a little bit better rates. But uh, this is, once again, a very elast the elasticity of rates is, uh, of demand with rates is very interesting. Yeah, and, and uh, so sales are up, and so the question came from one of our uh, viewers, Jackie, is like, who's who's buying right now? Well, it's really interesting, and, and I think kind of going back on what you guys were just talking about, besides the rates, I agree with Pat. It, there's a calmness. There's even a calmness in, in the clients that I'm talking to. Um, they just they feel more – their confidence is up. And I've been talking to a lot of people that, that had been waiting on the sideline. Had, I've got several clients that told me they were looking a couple years ago and they just threw their hands up in the air. And then they had, in this last year, they had no idea where things were gonna go. And they felt so unsure. And the last three, four weeks, it's just kind of really been stable. And so the clients that I'm working with, um, some of that, it's kind of across the board. I've, I've got some first time home buyers. I'm actually surprised I'm seeing quite a few move up buyers that are selling. So we've got some clients that were listing their homes and um, they're purchasing. They're being realistic with the, the pricing of, of selling. Um, and then I'm, I also have quite a few that are military moves as well. So, you know, we are seeing some of the ones that it's a necessity that they've got to move. Um, but it's really kind of across the board. I, the only thing, I take that back. What I'm not seeing, and from all the other agents that I'm talking to, is the luxury market. The luxury market kind of is really dropped off. And I don't know what the numbers, because I haven't been following those numbers as much. But the luxury market seems like, that's kind of stalled and maybe it has to do with the stock market and people are feeling unsure where things are heading um, with that. But the rest of the market, it almost feels normal, which is nice, which, you know, I was saying before the show, there is no normal anymore ever since COVID, but it's just, it's refreshing. Yeah, There's, it really is. It, to, I'm when seeing you go multiple to, offers you know, too, though. When you get to go to book a showing and you, you don't see 20 more people booking it for the same day. And uh, <clears throat> um, we just have one that's going to close on Friday that Pat's helping me with. And uh, this one was great because they, they, they made it look, you know, they priced it right and they made it very presentable. They staged it and it was crisp and clean. And then uh, the inspection went well, just a few things to fix on the roof, and they did. They agreed to fix everything. We only had three items to, to fix. And then we went back for the final walkthrough on Monday. They had that place professionally cleaned. Wow, that's nice. I mean, you, there the wasn't it should a be. speck of dust in there, all mopped, cleaned, vacuumed. It just had a nice smell to it. And I thought, wow, this is so nice because when things were really going nuts, <laughs> you kind of weren't seeing that. Mm -mm. And so no. it's glad to see not some even, of that come back. Not even well, the presentation when they went on the market. I mean, it's just, even as far as the agents, I'm seeing more professionalism, um, except for a couple different companies I won't mention, but, you know, they're, <laughs> they're taking... <laughs> I slid we won't there. mention any names. Uh, uh, come on. I won't it, mention... We, we in had a, an in issue a normal, with that. We, yeah. 
yeah, I don't want to get in trouble. In a normal market, um, um, you should uh, kick your game up and do something like, I don't know, answer your phone. Um, yeah. Sometimes you go to start. show, people are relying on showing time too much, which is a scheduling service that we all have. And, and you know, why do I have to use showing time to get permission with the house is vacant? And uh, I mean, I, I, I suppose it's just for overlapping purposes, but, uh, um, and then it's vacant, but yet there's still a call before showing code that I have to have. And sometimes oh, we don't, they, you have to call them to get that code so that you can get the key. And, and you know, you're standing, you know, you're on your way to the place and you're calling and you're calling, and you're calling, and you don't hear from them. And you're standing out front with your client. Well, I can't get in. I don't have the code, you know, answer the phone, you text. Um, so, yeah. you know, that's starting to improve finally. Mm -hmm. But what are you seeing in new construction? Because, you know, we're, we talked about, we're seeing more spec homes coming on. I'm seeing homes uh, that get emailed to me that say they're available and uh, for moving on February and available for March. So there isn't this one year wait anymore, but new construction seems to be holding their own, aren't they? It, it does. We've got four right now, I believe, new construction. Now I am still seeing, and I think it's more because of the buyer's confidence. I'm seeing buyers more interested in ones that will close quickly. I was out with a client that um, she was here in December. I showed her 30 new homes. I was like, Ooh. oh my goodness, which, you know, whatever. I mean, she's coming from another state. If that's what she felt like she needed to see, it's okay. I mean, that's what we're here for. Um, but it gets confusing when you're doing, looking at so many properties like that. So yeah, you kind of got to like, yeah, they do. So anyways, long story short, uh, she ended up, we just went under contract this week, in fact, and uh, it, it'll be ready in March. So it's a Centex home that uh, Centex only gives you two options. They got two color palettes. They've got, I think, two options for each style elevation. Um, it's, you know, there's no customization to it. So what I am seeing, though, is I, I feel like the buyers are more confident if it's a quicker closing, because I still hear some nervousness about, but where might rates be nine months or 12 months from now? And so every single new buyer, new, every single buyer that I'm talking to that's looking at new builds is wanting those quicker closes. Yeah. Yeah. And I, and I think it's for that very same reason too. You don't mm -hmm. want to be out too far because you're going to take on some rate risk. And then you read things like this. Goldman Sachs says four U.S. cities will suffer a 2008 crash in home values, and we are one of those four. Um, they're in Was San that? Jose, San Diego, California, Austin, Texas, and Phoenix. But the article really is kind of, they say it, and yet they, they don't say it. They say, these declines would be similar to those with, witnessed during the Great Recession. Home prices fell 27% according to that time. But they're saying that that will likely see notable increases before drastic decreases. What does that mean? Well, we We're likely 40, to see 000, notable increases this year? I don't think so. We need 40,000 more homes quickly for that to happen. And the, yeah, and they're so they're saying um, they're they're predicting that mortgage rates are going to be 6.3 to 6.5 by the end of the year. And uh so, but they finish it up by saying, assuming the economy remains on the path to a soft landing, avoiding a recession, and the 30-year fixed mortgage falls back to 6.15 by year-end 2024, home price growth will likely shift from depreciation, depreciation to below-trend depreciation in 2024. So it's kind of um, kind of a mixed mixed message there. They're saying, well, we're going to go up before we come down. And then when we come down, we're probably not going to see recovery until the end of 2024. And rates are going to go up instead of instead of down. But it's just one opinion. And, you know, we've we've shared these websites a lot. And, and uh, let's say you can line up uh, every economist, you know, in a straight line, still not come to a conclusion. Yeah. So you get 20 economists yeah. in a room, you get 20 different opinions. It's yeah. So it's just, you know, just just another thing to watch. But it's really making the headlines out there right now. And uh, I think I was going to try and pull up some. Um, uh, I'm looking at price changes here. And 
that's calming down too. number of price reductions. And it's because the people that were going nuts up here are uh, taking a closer look at what's actually selling and they're, they're pricing them closer to market than they were. So what's I'm interesting, I was, oh, real quick, I, I, real quick before I forget, I was on my cycle this weekend. I was going up to Scottsdale. I was going up, uh, you know, just through kind of Scottsdale. And, you know, I, I just, I was kind of amazed that um, I saw a lot, a lot more number of open houses. Well, but that makes sense too, because we couldn't even hold an open house last year because, you know, somebody listed yeah. on Thursday, it was under contract by Saturday. So yep. why even bother? Mm -hmm. Yep. I mean, I, 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 I quit doing them all together. A lot more activity on the open houses too. I know the majority of a lot of tired people going say, on. Yeah, I know the majority of uh, the agents in our office are doing open houses every single weekend, and they're getting good foot traffic. So I, I think you know it's it's kind of calmed down. People feel a little bit more secure. Um, but again, you know, I, I think they also see there's a window right now. So mm -hmm. I think the unknown going forward for this market is you know obviously. You know, um, I don't think anybody's buy or sell decision is based on the Super Bowl unless you're a, an Airbnb owner because it, it doesn't affect the housing market at all. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm, we get a nice infusion of cash, you know, in tax revenue, but it doesn't, doesn't change the general direction of the real estate market. Um, but after spring training, uh, will we see this glut of Airbnbs? Um, start to come down a little bit either they convert them to long-term rentals or they sell them all together and jackie you and i saw a stat this week talking about water that we didn't know was when a new developer put puts uh, plans uh -huh. together uh to build they have to have a 100 year supply of water they have to show where that water is coming from and get approved to put it in except these build to rent houses don't have to do that that makes no sense to me. Yeah. And it just, it goes to show you the screwy rules we have regarding water. And that's why we're seeing those really start to show up on the outlying areas. I'm seeing a lot of them in mm -hmm. far East Mesa Apache junction, way out on the fringe, all mm -hmm. these, you know, they're all, all you know, build the rent and those places are expensive. Yeah. They start we're at 2,400 a month. We're seeing a lot on the west side, too, and some of them, speaking of that, with the pricing, some of them, it doesn't make sense where they're putting them. You know, they're in, I, I've seen some in lower-end neighborhoods, and then they've got these built to rents, and you're right, the, the rental amounts are usually, you know, 21, 22, 23, 24 at minimum, and it just doesn't go, I'm surprised at some of the neighborhoods where I'm seeing them. It doesn't make sense. Well, Pat, we, we shared an analogy with each other yesterday when we were talking about the difference between now and 2008. Do you remember what that was? Yeah, in 2008, everybody jumped in the pool, right? Yeah. And what, 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 the pool was empty. The pool was empty. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> but now, not but, every, and so we're, what we're talking about is, you know, in 2008, you didn't see everybody ready and waiting to get to buy a house like they are now. Yeah, because yeah. everybody jumped in. Everybody, everybody jumped in, and there jumped. there was no water in the there was no water in the pool at the end. <laughs> so, That's a good analogy. But now we, we got uh, yeah, we, we come up. We sit there we and have a beer. Come we, up with those, we, come up and down. <laughs> we come up with this stuff when we're just talking. It's kind of funny. But he's like, "That's a good one." I said, "Yeah," because he said, "He goes, yeah." yeah there's like the pool. Of, the pool of buyers jumped in the right, pool, yeah. and I said, "Yeah," but there was no water in the pool in '08. <laughs> But it, I mean, but that there, it just seems as though, like you said, I, you know, you're right, Rick. I mean, I, it just seems, you know, I had talked about this for the last several months on I mean, you and I, we've all talked about it, but there's this, this backlog of people that, you know, from the millennial, the demographics, there's this, this backlog of people that got pushed out of the bidding wars. They're still, if they were looking to buy a house a year and a half, they got ticked off and they just pulled back. They're still looking eventually to buy a house. They're, that pool of people is still out there. And we did not have that pool in 08. Yeah, well, I think, 
you know, we know what we know, and here's what we know. We know that the closer rates get below six, the more our activity goes up. Yep. And if we get up at 6.5, it screeches to a halt. Yeah. So so that's that's the barometer right there. So yeah. if we see rates start getting above 6.5 now, then we can just count on the sales number to flatten and start to go down and inventory will start to go up. If we start navigating down towards the high fives, then uh, activity is going to pick up. So the buyers are out there watching and waiting and following the rates closer than they ever have for a long time. And uh, they weren't really paying. They didn't have to pay attention to rates in 2021 and half of 2022. They just, mm. oh, I agree. Cool. Yeah. Uh, let me see if I can get in the house, though. So yeah. <laughs> hold the very markets. So. I'll mention this tomorrow in tomorrow's Friday's uh, video, but uh, I'll repeat it now. But Barry Habib from MBS Highway thinks that we're going to have a significant event on interest rates May 10th when they come up with uh, inflation numbers on May 10th. And he's, he feels, go back to that chart, if you could. Here's my chart. He thinks this is, this. he, he called this November 10th right here. This is November 10th. Barry had uh -huh. called that. He said, watch out, Infl if the inflation numbers come in softer, we're going to have a great, you know, great day. He called that event right here, and he's saying on May 10th, um, watch out for the May 10th uh, inflation numbers. So uh, about four months from now. He feels we'll have another event just like that in the positive yeah. territory. Yeah, so we'll, we'll um, put that on the calendar to watch. Yeah, well, that's... Uh... And if that happens in this market and we end up with a, a huge drop in interest rates in May, that's when our market really starts picking up here. Yep. So it's going to be interesting. Hopefully we have the inventory. And we yeah. got this video. That's my fear. We can go. We, we can always go back in this video and see if, ours, if, we, if we were right. Yeah, we'll have to flag. It'll be the one time we're right. So. Yep. <laughs> uh, well, guys, great. Yep. Take on the day. Have a great yep. rest of the week. And we will see you next week. All right. I see you on Friday, Pat. So.